In this lecture, we are addressing the question of will there be precipitate? And in addressing that question, this is really now getting back to our old friend Q. It's really just a question of Q versus uh, K, S, P, right? In both cases, the equations are exactly the same. If we were to look at a general reaction, we would end up with something maybe like this, where our starting solid <clears throat> is put into water, and then we have the two ions that result. You know, so for our notion of KSP, well, that's equal to our ion one times our ion two. Um, but that's also with Q. difference is, again, is that this is at equilibrium, meaning that our rate forward is equal to our rate backwards, while with KSP, that's just simply now not uh, not the case. With Q, we are just not at equilibrium, so our rate forward does not equal the rate backwards. So it's in that relationship of comparing Q to K that allows us to figure out whether the equilibrium is shifting to the right or shifting to the left. And that's really answering the question of will there be precipitate or not? That it's, it's just a comparison in those two values. So if Q is greater than KSP, right, that means that we have too much product an equilibrium reaction needs to shift towards the starting material side or left Right, to reach equilibrium or to reach KSP. So in this particular case, you will have a precipitate So that if, is if Q is greater than KSP. If we had then the opposite scenario where Q now is less than KSP, that means that we have, you know, too few product. And the equilibrium reaction now needs to shift in the opposite direction or shift towards the product side or the right to reach KSP. So in this case, you know, no precipitate 
more solid can dissolve because we're not yet at that threshold of KSP. If Q is equal to KSP, um, then we are basically at equilibrium. No shift occurs. Right? And this would also you know represent a saturated uh, solution. in that particular scenario. So in, in this case, right, um, there's no precipitate. But no more solid can dissolve. We could obviously influence that with temperature, but we've been talking about you know, keeping constant temperature here for that for that relationship. So let's look at um, an example of of relating these two values, Q versus KSP. Okay, so here is our question. We need to predict whether or not calcium fluoride would precipitate if 5.26 molar, I'm sorry, 5.26 times 10 to the negative fifth molar sodium fluoride uh, is present or added to a solution that is also 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. The KSP for calcium fluoride is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10th. And we want to assume that there's no change in volume of solution for this particular example. So, again, the you know, first idea here is to relate, you know, what type of question are, are we looking at? And we see this notion of predict whether or not a certain solid, calcium fluoride, will precipitate. So, we have this idea of predict a precipitate or solid formation. And so that notion of predicting whether a solid will form or or not, that's you know this relation of 
relationship of Q versus KSP. So basically we need to figure out both of those entities. We actually already know one of them. We do know the KSP for the calcium fluoride is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10th. Um, what we need to figure out is what is Q actually equal to. And in, in terms of that Q idea, we could look at the concentrations of, of uh, the different features that are within this. We have a concentration here of 5.26 times 10 to the negative second molar in sodium fluoride. Now, really, what we're interested in here is the actual fluoride because that's part of our calcium fluoride that we have in terms of the, the particular solid that we're looking at. And we also have this concentration of our calcium, right? Which again is what, what we're also after in terms of that solid material. So we want to use that information as far as the concentration of the fluoride and the concentration of the calcium to get at our Q. We could say that our fluoride is equal to 5.26 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, right? The molecule is one to one, so it has the same concentration as the molecule sodium fluoride does. And we also have that calcium concentration given to us as well as being 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So we can apply those two to Q and then solve for the actual question of will there be precipitate or not. So Q would be equal to to this, right? That's based off of our reaction for the calcium fluoride. I um, guess I jumped the gun a little bit there with that. So let's bring that down. Let's look at our equilibrium reaction and what that's equal to and then what KSP and Q is is equal to right and so we were specific with the calcium fluoride And so there is our equilibrium expression. And so that then allows us to get at what Q is equal to in terms of those, you know, in terms of the equilibrium process. So now we can just plug in those values that we have above in blue, that our calcium concentration was 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. Our fluoride concentration was 5.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. That quantity squared. And so we end up with Q being equal to 5.5 times 10 to the negative 13th. Our KSP above was 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10th. And so what we find is, well, that Q is much less than our KSP. So that means that no solid precipitate of the calcium fluoride 
would occur. And that's simply by, again, that relationship of Q versus KSP. The question is uh, pretty much the same as solver for a KSP like we've done in the past, um, but it's just that we are not at equilibrium. Um, so that is Q versus KSP.